Hello, gorgeous seekers, and welcome to this Aries new moon happening on April 11th, 12th, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, and I am coming at you with a little extra fire, a little extra drama, a little extra pizzazz, because I'm feeling this energy. I love fire energy. I have a lot of fire energy. And it's also um, a bit of a rebellious moment that I am taking right here. And it's one that is very tied to the message of this new moon. I often, this is the age of the internet, and we all know how that works, which means that, you know, if you put yourself out there, there are always going to be people that are hanging around having something to say about who they think you need to be as a creator, as a person who they think I need to be. And one of the things that has come up is, oh, you're being too dramatic. I don't like those openings. If you don't do, you need to not do the openings that way so that I can listen to the reading that I want to listen to. Otherwise, I want to leave. And right away, it's just like, you know, I am who I am. And I don't want to make myself small for people. I don't want to cut myself into thousands of tiny slivers and portions of who I am to make somebody else comfortable about their own insecurities, their own fears, their own sense of lack. Um, so message number one about this Aries new moon is to be to come back to an innocent place of self acceptance and to really embrace who you are with all your different uh, modalities, places in yourself that maybe you feel insecure about or places in yourself that you feel you have had to tamp down or make small or modify, right? So because Aries energy is all about re-embodying and embodying the I am in a healthy way, right? In a way that allows us to be creative and to go for things and to try things and to have kind of that innocent childlike playfulness. And this new moon really speaks to that. We have sun and moon together at 22 degrees of Aries and very close by we have Venus at 26 degrees of Aries. And these three are having this beautiful conversation. This is the first new moon of the Western astrological new year. And so there is this freshness, there is this innocence, there is this focus on just not worrying about the storylines we have for ourselves, not worried about, you know, all the people we've been even in the last six months and how that's changed us and how that's disallowed our innocent creative selves and our innocent joyful selves to be here it's not it's like take all of that away and what is here with us now is this playful energy so right away this new moon just has an innocent playfulness to it, an innocent creativity to it that is so profound. It's so simple that it like, I think sometimes we skip over the message of what it means to be an innocent creativity. It's the it's accessing the creativity that we have when, you know, we're kids and we're playing outside and we are just being ourselves right? Not to necessarily impress anybody or to have power dynamics over other people or to have predominance in the, in the art of sidewalk chalk. Um, it's, it's to play, it's to imagine, right? There's a, a freeness to that. There is a healthy sense of joy and playfulness before, you know, you have people telling you, oh, well, you need to you need to pursue a career in this way. You need to dress this way. You need to uh, identify this way. That's how you make it through the world, right? There is an innocence that we, that gets tamped down over time culturally. And so this new moon is really tapping into that joyful, playful, childlike sense of lightness where it's not about the productivity that you are making. It's not about being creative so that you can show it to other people and then they will give you praise or criticism. It's not about success in terms of having like, you know, a vision board full of like big apartments and lots of money and all of that. It's about accessing a joyfulness that has to do with like why life has any meaning at all, which is about being in that creative space, that light, playful space. This moon is also really beautifully uh, sextiled by Jupiter in 
Aquarius and Mars and Gemini. Jupiter and Mars are actually doing this beautiful trine in these air signs, so they're speaking together. They're, this is very creative visionary energy. This is about getting our inventive thinking caps on and just playing and experimenting and exploring our thoughts. And rather than going around in the same little circle of thoughts about ourselves that maybe we've been having over the last six months, the, these energies here that are supporting the moon and really in a beautiful, soft, sextiling conversation with the Aries new moon is asking us to get inventive, get creative with our thoughts, have fun playing with that. It's kind of um, an extension of our Libra full moon discussion that we had where it's like, how are our thoughts, how are the stories we tell about ourselves nourishing us or holding us trapped? How is the way we're talking about ourselves and our recent experiences or even distant long-term experiences shaping whether we allow ourselves to be playful and joyful and grow into our next shape or disallowing that and keeping us in the same circle, the same logic, the same shape? You know, is our fear of criticism causing us to maybe hold back and keep ourselves small and keep ourselves maybe as what we think of as palatable or acceptable, right? So this moon is really, it's very supportive. There's a lot of support here. All this trining sextiling energy, Venus being here, there's a lot of playfulness at play. But I think sometimes strangely, when we get the message to be at play, we get the message to empower ourselves with our thoughts and the way that we're speaking to ourselves. As simple as that exercise is, it's sometimes the scariest one, especially if you've had a season of life or maybe you have been thinking scary thoughts or you have been going through traumas or stressors or um, a dark place. To gently come out of that and with your thoughts can feel really overwhelming, like this mountain that you have to climb to get back into a place where maybe you're feeling a little bit more of that joyfulness and that lightness. So if you are somebody who has gone through that, and I'm actually right there with you, this past winter for me was one of the hardest winters of my life for a lot of reasons, and I definitely felt myself slipping from some of the practices that allow me to access that joy um, so much and that's okay. Like it's okay it's to not be perfect all the time. It's okay to, to go and visit with your grieving self and your shadow self. Um, and that's actually the other aspect of this moon that I want to cover here before we do the cards. Um, this moon is also getting squared by Pluto in Capricorn. Um, Pluto is actually exactly squaring Venus during this new moon but he's also loosely squaring the moon and sun. And so Pluto here, <laughs> giving us a little square challenge uh, in the context of all this other supportive energy is really interesting to me because you know Pluto has to do with our shadow self and our transformational self and the empowerment that we get from embracing our transformation or the disempowerment we get from trying to push it away, trying to keep it submerged, trying to keep it separate from the rest of us, right? Pluto rears his head when we ignore him and we try and sever ourselves from parts of ourselves that make us uncomfortable, or we try to sever ourselves from transformational experiences. So here in this challenge, one thing I will say about accessing the joyful theatricality and playfulness and childlike joy of this Aries new moon is that that actually comes hand in hand with like really honoring and owning how you've transformed. And, and rather than trying to run away from it or be scared of it or feel like it's something that you're lacking or like things that you just lost, right? A lot of times transformation involves the loss of an identity, of people, of senses of security, of storylines, of all sorts of things, right? Like when we transform, we let go of certain markers that we had used for a while that let us know who we are inside of ourselves. How do we get curious about that? How do we lean into that in order to actually help us springboard more into that joyful childlike play? And I think it is, it's, it's a funny thing because it's almost like, wait, if I go toward that Pluto style transformation, 
shadow side, won't that take away my joyful playfulness during this new moon? Won't that mean that I'm going to spend the weekend, <laughs> you know, journaling and crying about things that have hurt? And maybe that's true. Maybe that is what will happen. But often when we are willing to just sit with our transformational self and the part of ourselves that is empowered by transformation and excited by transformation, we actually access our childlike joy, wonder, curiosity, and inventive thinking like I said, with Mars and Jupiter, that allows us to actually embrace our new shape and to have fun with it and not take it so seriously. And so there's there's a bit of going through the dark wood to come into the sunlight that happens during this new moon as well. So don't be surprised if you have um, <laughs> a few different conversations going on during this new moon energy. Let's pull a card and see what's coming up. Yes, I have really been thinking about how this last year I've wanted to make everybody comfortable with me, right? Like I, I'm a very giving person and, and the shadow side of that is you can start to dissolve and not in like a, a beautiful spiritual way, but in a way that means that you're no longer fully present and you know, you that people pleasing part of me um, can really <laughs> come up and, and cause issues. And I'm, I'm pretty tired of it. I'm feeling very fiery, very rebellious, and very much like, if you don't like who I am, that's fine. Please help yourself to the rest of the world. King of Wands. That's a perfect card <laughs> for this moon. It really, really is. Uh, and just what I was just saying, right? I think King of Wands is probably one of the most self-possessed energies you can have. This is somebody who, yes, sometimes can be stubborn, can be stuck in their ways, can want to do it just their way and nobody else's, can be a bit uh, self-obsessed even, I would say, right? That's a, kind of the, some of the shadow sides of King of Wands. But what's the beautiful part of King of Wands? King of Wands knows who he is and is willing to take that space for himself and has his eye on what really he's really after in life. He's not getting distracted by a whole bunch of shiny objects or things that he's supposed to be doing. He's just really in a masterful state of focus. And that's another thing I want to say about this new moon. Um, sometimes when we hear, okay, it's like it's airy season, it's time to be creative, it's time to be productive, it's time to make things happen, it's time to be everything and plants are direct and we get confused thinking that that means we need to come up with 10 new goals and we need to want a whole bunch of stuff. We need to want crazy success and like success as in terms of like a penthouse and tons of money and all of these things and we need to like make sure that we're striving for those things and make sure that we feel like we're on the ball and I think King of Wands subtly speaks to it's not about any of that it's about something much simpler and it's gonna look slightly different for every single person but it's about focusing on your joy focusing on what it is that blooms you to life, what really matters, what really matters. And just looking there, putting your energy there, harnessing your energy there, and actually simplifying down, removing all the extras and the bells and whistles that just are not speaking to you and just homing in. On that magical spark within you and it can like I said it's gonna look different for everyone for some people it's gonna be like nourishing family some it's gonna be about a creative project for some it's gonna be about envisioning a new dream of life for some it's gonna be just simply resting <laughs> that's gonna feel like the golden ticket and the thing is, we write a lot of stories in our mind, going back to inventive thinking. We write a lot of stories in our mind as to why we're not allowed to focus on that thing and why we have to disallow ourselves that space and that connection to what it is that really matters to our soul. Not what we think we need to care about in order to feel like we're taking care of our souls, 
But what really sparks joy for us, right? What really brings us back to just a state of play. And this moon, what I'm going to ask you to do here is to really notice when you're writing those narratives for yourself that say you aren't allowed to find ways to just focus on what it is you really care about and be willing to release them and be willing to access a part of yourself that's just very simple, very pure, right? And pure, I mean, not in the sense of like, oh, I'm just so... Uh, like pure as in whole, as in you're not dividing yourselves into little pieces. You're not making yourself into some shape that's not you. You're coming from a place of just naturalness where you're not forcing a script on yourself. And that's what this new moon is all about. And it's energy that we can take with us for the rest of this year. So um, this is a beautiful moon of like newness freshness and accessing freshness and we can always access freshness that's the thing we can always access that whole state that integrated state within ourselves it's always available all year round every single second of every single day you are allowed to go to this place this new moon is just highlighting that energy much much more and you better believe around here you're going to be seeing more and more of my personality and more and more of my uh, takes on things and the way that I've been doing this work and, and focusing and exploring this stuff So I'm really excited to share more of that with you and I'm wearing my one of my best friends jewelry pink loon She made this crown for me for my wedding last year and I didn't yeah, and it's just gorgeous It's all citrine and um, I support her because I love her. She's one of my best friends um, and somebody I really care about and so if you're interested, you can look at her Etsy shop. I'll leave the link below. And you can also find me on Patreon where we're gonna be doing an awesome activation for this Aries new moon. Um, we always do activations for every single moon. So it's an exercise, a space to come to during that moon. That's really beautiful. And I will be discussing all the outer planet retrogrades coming up this summer. Um, we're gonna be covering all sorts of exciting adventures when it comes to the journey of tarot and astrology. So I'd love to see you over on my Patreon, a really great way to support me and connect with me. Please like, share, and subscribe. I love having you here. Let me know how your new moon in Aries is going. I'm trying to get better at connecting with you in the comments. And you can find me on my website and Instagram as well. So I'll leave all of those goodies in the description box and I will see you all very, very soon for more moon magic. Sending you my love.